Welcome, uh, good evening, good day, good morning, good night, whatever is applicable to where you are. I'm uh, Ablaut, and this is Cable Madness, episode 10. I will be live patching this V-Rack, and uh, you are listening to a patch I made for a uh, live stream a few weeks ago, which I titled While You're Waiting. And in that patch, I used DHE's Zycloid with the even VCO. But today, I'm going to do something different. And uh, so that means we need to start from an empty palette. So let's open my template for the live stream. And this is episode 10. So welcome. Um, as usual, my template has a plateau pre-wired. Uh, and I'm using this little mixer from Bog Audio. And off screen is the peak limiter from CF, the master mixer from CF as well, the audio or audio module, and uh, submarines wire manager to give us a few more colors, and submarines module browser, which is extremely useful. And as usual, uh, I'm bridging this to Reaper. And in Reaper, I have um, a little bit of EQ, a compressor, uh, some stereo widening, and some saturation from Air Windows, BSD uh, open source modules, and a compression from Sonic Anomaly, also free. So there we go. And uh, as I said on the Facebook group, because someone was asking, uh, lately I've been listening to Terry Riley, one of the uh, minimalists from, I think he started in the 60s already, from the 70s especially, um, and his uh, Persian surgery dervishes, which he plays on a modified organ, uh, to get something close to just intonation, if I remember correctly. So, what I want to do today is get um, something going with basil again. I did that last week as well. Um, it's a beautiful little oscillator from Vault. And I think I'm gonna start feeding it pitch and uh, triggers from marbles, aka the random sampler. And I'm going to quantize that through Scala quantizer, even though it has a quantizer, if you turn it here onto the steps, uh, it has uh, major, minor, pentatonic scales, and a few foreign ones. But I want to use this one from 31 Tet, uh, so 31 divisions of the octave, and we choose the intervals that come close to just intonation into some kind of mixolydian scale. I plucked this out of Scala, also free software uh, that you can use for like microtonal scale uh, design. Anyway, so it will be re-quantized here in Scala. 
and uh, greetings Andrea and Galabor cup of coffee yeah it's a bit late for coffee here although I'm known to drink coffee late as well but I'm actually having a cocktail of my own design so to say gin um, Grand Marnier and grapefruit juice so cheers and I'm still suffering from a cold like last week although the worst is over but you might hear me cough now and then so I'm also keeping a glass of water nearby anyway uh, let's uh, start making music so we said we would use vault where is it vault let's use the free one basil is free and that's our oscillator so um for the first voice i'm going to use the middle output here i'm going to uh, limit the spread and set the bias a bit towards the low end and uh, we'll get the output here into basil and there goes our first voice And that's a very wide range of notes, so we're going to change this to 0 to plus 2 volts, which is 2 octaves. And I think that will be enough. I think just too much reverb. Strange, huh? I usually love very, very wet sounds, lots of reverb. But today I think... We're going to limit it. A bit of reverb just to give it a bit of like space. Hmm. And I think we want it a bit faster. And probably some jitter as well. I'm uh, looking for kind of an organ sound. Something like that maybe.
That sounds a bit nasal to me. This makes it softer. Something like that. And uh, yeah, this is my trick to make it sound Riley-ish. So I set the length of the phrase to six notes and then uh, lock in the pitches. And dial the deja vu back to like 11 o'clock so you get some new notes introduced now and then. So it repeats and then it starts changing over time. But I'm not convinced about the scale here. There is this one, this is Terry Riley's himself. Interesting ones. Do I have in here? Let's try this, see uh, if we still like it. And uh, welcome to the live stream, Leonardo as well. And Omri said he would drop by as well. So it's gonna be a, a busy night for me. But it's good to see people interested in the live stream. All right, what else can we add? We want a second voice, maybe something for the bass. And uh, I'm gonna put this one over here, make some room here. Uh, Leonardo says that he's glad I like it and he was hesitant to release it because it was simple and the sound was smooth. But we need smooth things as well. It can't just be wild and chaotic and 
rough and noisy. I mean, I love Noxious and other stuff uh, that's more complex, but sometimes you need something smooth as well. So yeah, it's nice. And the other thing that was recently released that I haven't used yet is uh, Squinky Labs Triple uh, what was it? Triple Even VCO. This one. And uh, I must say, Squinky Labs does excellent stuff, and I don't use their modules enough. I haven't even tried like Chippy Chef in a patch yet. Maybe that's for next week. Um. So I'm thinking maybe we could use this for the base. Maybe keep it at a sign. Let's base go a bit slower maybe. Uh, And then slightly detune the other two and see what we get. Why do I get nothing? Hello. Okay, let's try this again. Oh, wait, I need to. Uh, Quantize this one too. But I still am not getting any sound out of this. Am I doing something wrong? Oh, it is. I need to turn up the mixer. Tuning of this, we get some uh, the beating. Like a tremolo kind of effect. Which reminds me, the very cool patch contest is about the tremolo. Maybe we should use it too. Thank you. 
this will give us something not too distorted. I think terminal will be good to add. I'm going to fall back on tangents for the filter here. modulation I just want to get the basic tone right yeah I think this kind of works for me
if we motivate this cutoff, we get some movement. And if we make it stereo, we can uh, move through the stereo field as well.
So now I'm uh, modulating the deja vu parameter here, putting it back in the 12 o'clock position. So it's locked in, except when it gets this uh, CV input. If it goes below zero, then of course it will turn counterclockwise and uh, allow new information in. So it will select a few, the occasional new pitch into the sequence. And uh, if it's positive, green, then we'll turn clockwise and do some random picking of the pitches that it has in the sequence. Oh, Andrea. Caudal is like... Caudal is life. It's like the elixir, the, the philosopher's stone of modulation. And front, welcome, you're never too late. As long as there is still internet and you can still watch. So yeah, I love Cardal because uh, it has 12 outputs that all are like different um, So you have a lot of outputs for modulation You could even modulate like the speed and the energy of this thing and uh, it's chaotic it never repeats itself so there's always endless variation which is paradise for somebody who is doing generative music on vis -V rack I think I also want to modulate a few other things here. But not for the full range, so I'm using another one of these. For example, the spread. because I'm sure I'm missing things too. There is just so much out there and most of it is free. It's amazing. There's like endless stuff that I still need to explore, like the impromptu modules, like the sequencers and stuff. I like to do like this kind of random stuff, mostly. But um, sequencers can be very cool as well. And uh, just today, um, Modular Curiosity posted a video about using MIDI controllers with vis rack That is something I also need to try out. I haven't done that yet. So that opens up whole new ranges of possibilities as well.
modulating the spread and the bias when this goes like into the red, it limits the, the number of pitches that it can choose, so it seems to like stop for a while. And it brings some uh, breathing space into it, I think. This is really an amazing module. It's like topograph and uh, the Turing machine in one. Of course, there's some differences, but the basic functionality of those two modules is like combining here, which makes it very useful. When I 
jitter goes uh, past 12 o'clock clockwise, it uh, goes into chaotic territory. And I think for this patch that is not what I want, so I'm gonna turn back this one a little. This sound out of basil with the tremolo. I think I like it around here. And it comes and goes with the, the filter cutoff modulation. And then we have this, is also basil. different character to it. Oh, 
Red Egg, yes. Uh, the Wrangler, though, is quite different, I would say, from the Turing machine. Also very interesting, but... Yeah, there's lots of interesting stuff on uh, YouTube about modular synthesis. Which reminds me, if you're living somewhere like Europe, I guess, or America, you could watch uh, Molten... What's the... What's the Molten Technology? What's the channel name? He's having a live stream, like a Q&A, um, in several hours. Molten Music Technology. Yeah, but sadly, that stream is at 5 a.m. Shanghai time. Which is a bit early. I don't like getting up that early. So I'm not gonna watch that live, although I will check it out when I come home from work tomorrow. Sandra, thanks. Uh, Adam Neely is another YouTuber that I follow. He's great for like general uh, music theory and uh, stuff about playing live, playing bass, playing jazz. Um, so yeah, Adam Neely has lots of good content. Check him out if you haven't watched him. He also has an interesting video about like the slowest possible music or something, which apparently is 33 BPM, because if the beat goes slower than that, then we don't, we humans don't recognize it as a beat anymore. Stuff like that. Really interesting things, I think. So check out Adam Neely. And uh, Molten Modular, he does Eurorack. Um, I would vaguely describe his genre as techno. I'm not really into those kind of things, but um, he has a lot of interesting content. He also has a monthly overview of like technology, mostly hardware. Um, but he also tests software. He had a, a test of uh, what was the new uh, competitor of Visvirac? Cherry or something? Um, and he um, he's testing out the new Surface Pro for music production. So if you're interested in that kind of content, check out Molten Music Monthly. And uh, I really like his reviews of like Eurorack modules, individual modules. Uh, and sometimes there's like neat tricks or techniques that you see him doing. How would I do that on VCV rack? And of course, tomorrow we will have a new news of the rack. So watch that as well. To Keep up today with news of this v rack. Down. 
slightly. something I'm now always looking forward to. It's like doing a really good job uh, keeping us up to date. And uh, I also check it for like new modules that might be interesting for our very cool patch contest. Now there's been quite a bit of discussion uh, about the contest and about voting and all that. So yeah, I'm taking it all into consideration and uh, I might change some of the rules. And I think it was uh, Leonardo who suggested to make a video, but uh, I've, I thought about that from the beginning, but I just know that's gonna be a lot of work every time. And uh, time is not something that I have a lot of. But it depends how you use it, of course. But um, yeah, I know I would start seeing it like work pretty quickly. So that's something I'm trying to avoid since I'm doing this all by my lonesome. Um, so yeah, if somebody is interested in uh, doing an overview video of the submissions to the contest, that would be uh, very welcome, of course. And Andrea, thanks. Uh, He's saying that patch is really awesome and uh, sequences sound great. They do indeed, and that is the beauty of uh, our marbles and uh, the Turing machine on which it was inspired. So you get like repeated short sequences, and then now and then, either some. Uh, probability based randomness or we're introducing new pitches into the sequence like changing the sequence little by little so it keeps changing over time and that is something I really like I think it is time to have a look at our uh, voting 
and tally up the votes for VCP 17, very cool patch, contest week 17, using only noise as a sound source. And uh, it's been a very, very close race. Well, if you can talk about a race when we are talking about 12 votes out of the 15,000 members of the VCP Rec official user group. But anyway, John King has 12 votes and Omri Cohen has 11 votes for their respective patches in week 17. So uh, congratulations, John, and well done. And everybody, of course, well done. There have been quite a few patches on here. Um, personally, I want also highlight Nomad um, because the video also is really nice and well done uh, with uh, the different colors that he's using from uh, Squeaky Labs modules. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. And just check out the playlist when you have time which I understand may be a problem for people to watch all the submissions. So yeah, maybe we should put a limit to the video length for the submissions. And uh, everybody's free, of course, to make a longer version of uh, their patch video separately. But I think that might be necessary unless we give up voting altogether and just put things into a playlist for anybody to enjoy whenever they feel like checking it out. Ah, Fron is saying it would be great if the VCP would be sticky in a group. Usually I see way too late. Yeah, that is something only the admins can do and uh, I'm not sure if uh, that's something they want. But, well, you know, it's a new one is going up every Tuesday. So like 48 hours from now. Um, although I will probably switch to two weekly. That seems to be the preferred option right now. Uh, but vote in that poll as well. It's like, how long should the uh, the submission period be. Um, but yeah, I will try upvoting or like bumping it by adding comments to it. I also think uh, it would help if people post a link to their videos as a comment to the, 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 the main thread to the original topic. And a whole different thing, of course, is that a forum would be much better in general, I think, for the VCFIRA community. But for some reason, it's Facebook that we're using, which has its drawbacks. has something uh, bluesy to it now, right? I'm, I'm the only one who's hearing that. Mm. stuff I would be doing on my guitar way back when, 
I played uh, blues guitar. thing is there is also a reddit group a subreddit for vsphereac and uh, I always mean to but I often forget to post the challenge on there as well so I should set a reminder for myself to post it on reddit and several people post their videos there as well so it's uh, it's a good place to do it anyway played blues I loved blues yeah and as a teenager typically I uh, picked up the guitar and uh, then like in what you could call grade 11 or 12 like senior high I had a French a Frenchman who was my guitar teacher who lived with his girlfriend in my hometown in Holland and uh, yeah he was like a blues slash rock guitar player so yeah we played some blues together and I, I like that also from that time from when I was a teenager I was always really into Tangerine Dream and uh, they also have like a similar like use of guitar or well, somewhat similar I guess but like noodling over the main uh, music like listen to uh, the album Green Desert by Tangerine Dream And then there is stuff like Deep Purple, which has a lot of blues influence, and I love that as well. Although I must say, I don't listen a lot to that anymore. Sometimes, when nostalgia grips me, or some when the mood is right, I will listen to like rock. Deep Purple especially, Led Zeppelin, U2. And Janis Joplin, let's not forget. Janis Joplin.
and Jimi Hendrix. And of course, nice tidbit, I was born the day Jimi Hendrix died. thing is I have these periods that I'm like really into a certain genre of music and uh, yeah there's two genres that I keep going back to and that is ambient and progressive rock like 70s yes 70s genesis and then more modern uh, porcupine tree and the metal side, Dream Theater. Stuff like that. It just never gets old for me. But then, um, yeah, some years ago I discovered Side Up. Ot, especially. Tech, Andrew Cell, those kind of guys with really cool music. And then uh, a bit later, I discovered jazz. Well, I knew of jazz, obviously, but um, I never was into it. Most of the jazz I heard was just like, well, kind of aimless and often dissonant in ways that. I didn't enjoy. But then I discovered some jazz that I did like. So I started listening to more and more of it and it's like, wow, there is actually a lot of stuff in here that I do like. So yeah. Ah, Leonardo, yeah, Porcupine Tree is great. Also, different genre, but more like metal from Italy is um, Lacuna Coil. I love them as well. Lars is saying the 80s are considered kind of a dark period, I guess, for uh, Broke Rock. This is the second constellation of King Crimson. Yeah, no, it's like every every decade has good music. And uh, yeah, genres change, but there's always something interesting going on. And then you have people who are saying like, oh, modern music is all crap, but it isn't. You just need to find the niche that you connect with. Sure, I don't listen to like top 40 music anymore. I hardly know what's popular. But then sometimes I do hear something and say, wow, that's actually really good. But then I go home and listen to ambient again or jazz or whatever it is that I'm currently listening to. Indian Raga is another thing that I really enjoy. Uh, Franz saying jazz is like the birthplace of everything going on now. In his personal view, even the things my metal friends play sound like jazz to me when they don't play over them. Uh, yeah, jazz is obviously uh, influences everywhere. But there's, also, there's so much to jazz. And then you have things like uh, Omri's done some covers of uh, Eric Satie. 
that's older, but it's great stuff too. That's the great thing about music, it's an endless journey of discovery. Yeah, Caitlin Aurelia Smith, uh, Barbieri, Eliana Radic, or how do you say that? Uh, there's R. Benny on YouTube, who makes wonderful uh, modular music. Um, a light bath. Lars is saying, classical Indian and Tambora is pure ambient. It is, especially if you get into like uh, Terry Riley and even more, Lamont Young. He made music for that. Um, so yeah, there are these connections as well. And there is so much to Indian music. That's a whole another rabbit hole. I was very blessed um, going to university in Amsterdam, Amsterdam, and uh, in the area where I lived were lots of Indian people, like people from India. Um, so yeah, I enjoyed some live Indian classical music, and I really miss that. But now we have YouTube, of course, so you can check out wonderful work. And they have wonderful instruments as well. There is like the Vita Una, or how do you call it? Surbahar. Like these really big uh, stringed instruments, like get some really bassy tones out of it, and it goes really deep. And the way that they develop their music and improvise and just take time for it. I love that. And if you are interested in what I like, I this summer I made a, a little playlist with some early influences uh, so if you check out my youtube channel and uh, let me see what did i call it exactly go to playlists you need to go back a little because there's many vcv rec playlists every week and you one for the very cool patch contest but there is an early sources of inspiration playlist with 10 videos um, starting with Eric Satie, so definitely something up Omri's uh, street. So I go from classical music to early synthesizer music. And then um, Philip Glass, Kuyanis Katsi and Brian Eno. And uh, I should continue this playlist and add some more sources of inspiration. And maybe making another playlist with newer sources of inspiration as well. So you can check it out. 
although you may need to select your own scale in the quantizer because this is one that I added myself though I guess I should post it up somewhere as well Or you could just go for the JW quantizer and select Mixolydian, which should give you something similar, vaguely. because it's so easy to rank focused. Yeah, uh, recently, I think it was Omri posted on the group, or did he post it somewhere else? I think he posted in the uh, Ambient Modular group, which you should also subscribe to if you're interested in ambient music. Um, about uh, Abul Mogard, the supposedly Serbian retired factory worker who is making amazing music now. One of my favorite artists, current artists. I don't believe that he is actually a retired Serbian factory worker. There are all kinds of uh, theories going around about who he really is. but it's intentionally being kept a mystery. Anyway, it's amazing music. You should totally check it out. And there's a lot of good music being posted on the uh, Ambient Modular group on Facebook. chance like some months ago that I discovered Stuart Dempster who is uh, amazing as well um, 
he plays trombone and he has this record um, called underground overlays from the cistern chapel so he's in this chapel with this amazing natural reverb playing trombone and some other stuff with a few other musicians you should check that out and then I mentioned this in uh, on uh, the ambient online forums where I'm a member as well and people there were like yeah he's great and like, how come you never mentioned him to me it's like this is the kind of stuff that should be recommended more often The Serbian factory worker. I'll put it in the chat. Is Abu Mogard and um, the trombone player is Stuart Dempster. And then, if you like jazz. There is a British band with two, no, you know, I'm not sure, one or two tuba players, at least, instead of a bass, and they have two drum players, the Sons of Kemet. drum players and then there is the band leader Shabaka Hutchings playing sax and clarinet but that's of course not ambient <laughs> not that it matters Yeah, thank you all for checking in and uh, adding your thoughts to the chat. It's probably been, probably, it's probably been, yeah, the most lively chat we've had and a very inspiring chat about music. So thank you all for listening and contributing and uh, hope to see you again next week or whenever you can so keep making music keep patching try out lots of different modules in bcv rack and share your patches your discoveries so we can all learn from each other and if you like this video please hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet See you around.